it's official on the PCTA website. All of the PCT is closed in California National Forests, which is the entire length of the PCT in California. More than half the trail is officially closed. So, Okay, 10.35, August 22nd, bear can is on and is already annoying me. <laughs> and we're leaving Kennedy Meadows North on the official Kennedy Meadows to Kennedy Meadows Sierra section. The 2,650 mile Pacific Crest Trail is divided into five main sections. Amongst them, the 500 mile Sierra section is the most popular, with the smaller 300 mile stretch that connects the two Kennedy Meadows being the Pièce de Résistance. The features of this land have taken on legendary proportions in High Kingdom. Mount Whitney, the tallest mountain in the lower 48. The passes that loom triumphant over their marble domains. Lakes of such enchanting hues that one feels like he's dove into fantasy. And I was walking into that legend. I have a feeling we're going to have a lot of wind in the coming days. But it's worth it because we also have these kind of views. Whoa! That is a... Uh... Thick ash tree. <laughs> we are now in Yosemite, or as I thought it was called years ago, Yosemite. <laughs> oh, this is just one of the many passes that will continually get bigger and bigger. We go through the Sierras. It's steep. It's a lot of work. Another lake, another campsite. Past Donahue, we came upon Thousand Islands Lake, where our small impromptu trail family decided to take a zero. Where others fancied a day tanning and swimming, myself and a fellow hiker named Mr. Freeze had a different goal in mind. Banner Peak. The closer we get, the more difficult it looks. <laughs> yeah. So, the reason for me coming up here was twofold. One, because uh, it's beautiful and epic and awesome. The second was to try to get service, which usually I don't care about. But uh, very, very 
special thing is happening today. My sister is finding out what gender her child will be. And we have a running joke that she always tells me before the rest of the family. So I wanted to get up here to get the news. I don't have service now, but I must have had service a little while back. Because I got a text. It's a girl. Doesn't smell as bad as I thought it would. <laughs> like it's not good, but it's not like that's what my armpit smell like. That's bad. Sears. Upon reaching Mammoth Lakes, we stayed a night in a hostel and got our five-day resupply to make it to Bishop. Those beauties are Tim's feet. <laughs> Try to smell them, man. And these ones are my feet. <laughs> you wanna just quickly smack your smack your thing? You mean like this? <laughs> oh no! Oh my gosh. And we were off to the trail again. That's when we heard some disconcerting news. Some remarkable things have happened in about the last two and a half hours. We were just about to leave Mammoth when a stranger at a bar that we were walking by pulled us aside and said, hey, you guys hiking? And we're like, yeah. And he's like, apparently they're shutting down forests like man is shutting down so if you're gonna get out there you better get out there now so our plan was to literally we were literally going to the bus to leave so we thanked him but didn't really think much of it but then we kept hearing more and more mammoth resort employees our bus driver and texts from second and happy dance confirmed it for a myriad of reasons all pertaining to forest fires, all national forests in California were being shut down, effective the following morning. I guess... Keep going until we met the right meter ranger, I guess. Keep going until we're kicked out. The distance left to Kennedy Meadows South is over 200 miles. With five days of food on us and walking at our current relaxed pace, could have made it the hundred miles to Sawmill Pass and Bishop easily, which had been our plan. Now, with no knowledge of how long the closure was going to last, and afraid of getting off trail and not being let back on, we began thinking up some drastic strategies. If we could stretch our five days of food out to seven days, and raise our pace from 18 miles to 28 miles a day, we could hypothetically do the remaining distance of the Sierras, and, importantly, summit Mount Whitney in one mad rush. We'd have to be A, like super rationing all of our food. B, extremely lucky to not get caught. That's the most difficult part. And C, have to do massive miles in 
some of the hardest terrain of the PCT. The Sierras has multiple massive passes to do. Get all the high pass before I know. Holy shit, man. This could potentially be the end of our hike. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this is like, kind of stressed me out. <laughs> this isn't like, just now, we're walking through the PCT. Like, this isn't like, like, this is now like, this is a race to Mount Whitney now. And suddenly ramping up miles. It's hard to like, kind of, go lucky just walk along the trail when that's kind of in the back of your mind. I mean, I'll still be lucky walking around the trail. Because every mile I can do, I will do. And I'm happy about every mile. It's true enough. Originally, we were going to probably take, you know, two weeks to finish the Sierras. Now we're about to essentially attempt that in six or seven days. <laughs> Let's rock. Let's rock. We're gonna do this. I'm unsure if other thru-hikers think 28 miles a day is a lot through the Sierras. All I know is that the biggest day I've done on this thru-hike was a 30 in flat Oregon. Today, we're going to gain and lose 8,000 feet. How was that climb, Tim? Um, one of the best. I enjoyed it. Had a lot of fun. <laughs> I guess you feel the same, right? It was my favorite. <laughs> oh, I have so much salt or dried sweat all over me. The chafing pain. This is like, oh, if fingernails on a blackboard were a feeling, this is what it'd be. Oh. What the hell is happening? <laughs> Are they just out here alone? We started at 5.45 a.m. My back in pain, but my chafing thankfully gone. Half an hour after passing the random stray horses, we met their owners. Upon hearing that we'd seen their stock not that long ago, Cowboy Ethan told us to go get ourselves a coffee at their camp a few miles further. An hour later, we arrived at their camp. Apparently they let their stock out to graze at night, and they had just decided to wander off. And the most beautiful lady I'd ever seen was there. She offered to make us breakfast. We stayed for nearly an hour, telling stories and enjoying this unexpected trail magic. As we got up to leave, the angel gave us each one breakfast sandwich for the road, filled with bacon, cheese, and eggs. We had to get going. If I'd stayed much longer, I probably would have fallen in love with her.
We passed a few rebellious comrades doing the John Muir Trail, who gave us some food. They said there was a scarce hiker box with food at Muir Trail Ranch, which was surprising. The resupply here had to be brought in by horse, so only hikers who'd sent themselves a box several weeks ahead could reliably get food. We took the two mile detour, and sure enough, three buckets filled with goodies that other hikers didn't want. All right, what do we got here, Tim? Free resupply, I would say. <laughs> and actually better than the stuff I bought. How would you expect that? I mean, it's wrong with us. How would you put this in here? So, how are you gonna fit this in your pack? Um, I won't. <laughs> I just put some stuff in your pack without you noticing. What? <laughs> Same like you. What is it? 35. 35? Nice. That's not bad. That's fucking for, great. Are you kidding for, me? for eight days, that's great. We learned today that if you have a valid permit, the rangers will let you keep walking as long as you don't leave trail. The final shred of worry that was left in our minds has been settled. To Whitney. Day four, I think. It's getting colder and colder in the nights to the point where it's like you hope you don't wake up in the middle of the night because you know if you do, you'll be like kind of shivering. <laughs> so you wanna, you wanna just wake up in the morning and then get up. <laughs> the Sierras have two things in abundance, switchbacks and lakes. If you weren't straining your knees zigzagging up a cliff, you were leisurely strolling beside yet another five-star lake. I almost feel like shots like this are getting boring. <laughs> no, actually. Every view I get, I'm like, hell yeah. But film's just a collection of mountains. Why are you trying to pick a fight? Despite the fear of being kicked off trail being gone, we were still moving fast because of food constraints. Luckily for us, 
thru-hikers on the much smaller John Muir Trail treated Tim and I as heroes upon hearing we were PCTers and showered us with snacks. Feels like we're getting close to Whitney. Today we do Glen Pass and go up most of the way of Forester Pass. Climb up Glen Pass kicked my ass. The past week is catching up to me. My body aches all over, and a new pain seems to get added to the list every few miles. But we're almost there. Today's Forester Pass. I'm still tired. Physically exhausted. My body is aching. Gentlemen, Mount Whitney. As we approached the final miles, and the mountains began bleeding into desert. Tim and I thanked our lucky stars once more. The absurd amount of chance and effort that allowed us to walk in this mythological painting was staggering. Thousands of miles, a dozen Everests worth of altitude, angels, friends, and family that helped us onwards. Just for moments like this.
today, as of right now, on top of this mountain, top of Mount Whitney, I have walked 2,650 miles on the Pacific Crest Trail. And it feels like a good place to end. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go! Mount Whitney! Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> See you, Rose!